Episode 253 of the TV Dudes, recorded September 18th, 2019. The Gilded Age of Streaming. Gentlemen, we've done a podcast before recently, I think, where we talked about the golden age of streaming and how great streaming TV was for everybody and what a wonderful thing it was. And yeah. in some regards, it, it is. It is. It's very nice. But the same people who brought you cable and cable boxes would like to fuck you again. Yeah. And uh, we're talking this time, we're starting off the point of they just announced the Peacock Network, which is NBC, their, uh, their new streaming network. They're going to take a bunch of the big... Uh, big hits off of Netflix and Hulu like uh, Parks and Rec and The Office and try to round that up into an audience. We'll see how that works for them. Uh, but we're, we're we talk about that and talk about the state of, of streaming and whether or not streaming is getting too big for its britches. Uh, before we get into all that, uh, we're the TV Dudes. I'm Randy. I'm Kyle. I'm Les. And with us, we have a special guest in studio. Hello, I'm Dennis. <laughs> you might recognize Dennis from some of the question threads. Uh Dennis, you are you are here in Austin for uh, Fantastic Fest. I am. It's a great little uh, film festival. Yeah, here in town. And nice. uh, and we asked if you want to be on mic, and you were like, um, "Stop pointing that gun at me." <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> I do prefer not to have holes in my body. That's fair. Uh-huh. Kind of helpful. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, what's how many streaming services does everybody here have? I'm just curious, Dennis. What, how's your streaming oh, situation? Good question. <laughs> I have about four, but we don't have as many in Ireland as okay. ah. you have in the U.S. Well, let me walk down the list real quick. Okay. Uh, Netflix, obviously. Yep, sure. You got a Hulu. You got an HBO Go. Yep. We all accidentally got Amazon Prime because we all have Amazon Prime. Prime. Right, sure, yep. yep. Do you guys have YouTube TV? No. I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, the like the YouTube originals. Uh, Shutter is an uh, absolutely oh, great horror. Nobody here is an anime re- watcher, right? No, but I understand. I, um, oh, are you? Okay. Oh, uh, so yeah. so what's your what's your anime to go to? Do you do you yeah. have? I have Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll. Nice. Okay, I've got yeah. a ton of friends who have Crunchyroll. Yeah, it's handy enough on the PlayStation Four. I don't know what it's like on other platforms. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. It's um, pretty uh, standard across most streaming devices yeah. over here too. There's a few other. Uh, Anime streaming services, but they don't seem as good, and mm-hmm. some of them have got questionable uh, ethics. No, I'm I'm curious. So a lot of the a lot of the TV that I watch from the UK is on like it's either it's either like Channel Four or Sky. What is what is the streaming situation for that? Well, in Ireland, there's four stations. There's uh, streaming. RT has its own free streaming app for some of the shows you might have missed during the weekend. That's okay. about it. And you've got you've got Netflix, right? You have, yeah, I have Netflix. Okay, and, um, and then Amazon Prime is Amazon Prime in Ireland. Yeah, Amazon Prime and Shutter as well. But Shutter in Ireland oh, is yeah. absolute balls compared to the US. I was going to ask if it was the same stuff. I know Netflix is different even between here and Canada uh, mm-hmm. in terms of movies that are on it. Yeah, well, and, mm-hmm. and they've got all the Star Trek stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we've got we get Star Trek Destiny. Oh yeah. Uh, on Netflix because we don't have the CBS All Access, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a that's a big win. Did you get Twilight Zone as well? We did, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's a shame. You should apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I feel bad. Jordan Peele should feel really bad. Yes. Um, but yeah, so so Kyle. So yeah, that was like eight that we just named off, right? Yeah, there. yeah. And I think I'm in the same boat. It's like, yeah, Hulu, Prime, uh, Netflix, of course. I just re up my HBO because mm-hmm. Deuce is back and Silicon Valley's coming back and Watchmen's coming up. There's I'm still stuff. doing Showtime even though I'm watching nothing on it right now. Oh my now. god! <laughs> yeah. um, Cinemax has their own. I mean, uh, and Cinemax cast and a bunch of other Cinemax stuff. is oh. about to get me because they've got a show that's about Carla Gugino as a thief. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah. Man, there's no way I'm not going to watch Carla Gugino as a, as a gentlewoman thief. Well, of course, we're going to watch that show. Since we're having the streaming conversation, yeah. I have a really important question. I'm hoping you guys might know the answer to. Is HBO Max a different thing yes. than HBO and Cinemax so, together. So that actually brings us back to the topic. Okay. So all these networks are launching their own streaming. So we know Disney Plus is coming in November. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the DC app, which I noticed none of us mentioned. Um, <laughs> oh. There is, and DC, by the way, owned by Time Warner. Time Warner is launching its own app called HBO Max that mm-hmm. is going to have like original Time Warner and content. Those are both different than all of the stuff that they have partnered with CW. Yeah. 
They they have like four different streaming apps. They're also invested in Hulu somehow, right? I, I don't know. Disney may own all of Hulu. <laughs> I don't know. So there's going to be HBO Go, HBO Now, and HBO, HBO Max. Max. Yeah, HBO Max is actually not okay. just HBO. I already can't figure out the difference in the two HBO Go and Now. I always pick the wrong one that I'm not signed into <laughs> yeah. every time. Yeah. I have to go back to my TV and check the app icon without like need to log in on my computer. Sometimes I just go and find the movie I want to watch, and then I have to go over to Amazon where I'm logged in there to see HBO. Yeah. <laughs> but the Amazon HBO app won't show those movies to me sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think the thing with HBO, it should have been, they should have changed HBO Now, which is the one that ties into the channel. They should have just added a dollar sign to it, and then you know, oh, that's the one where I'm paying for cable. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I guess technically you pay for HBO Now, so that wouldn't be any clear. Oh, but it gets better. Yeah. Because you can actually have HBO Now and not pay for cable because certain cell services offer AT&T TV Now. Which oh, is a selection of AT and T channels, and as part of their deal, they will bundle HBO in there. So then you log in to HBO now, but instead of giving them a like TV provider, your TV provider is your cell phone. Well, and this is the thing: yeah. there's, we're we're starting to see that that splintering worse, worse and worse. Like they just announced a Mad About You you reboot, which I know that or not re, re, reunion, yeah, which I know Les and I at least are excited for. I don't know Kyle, where you come. I never watched Mad About You. Yeah, Dennis, any Mad About You love? No, I never liked it. No, fair enough. I love Mad About You. My wife and I used to watch it all the time. I've got huge fond memories of it. I think it's the best thing Helen Hunt's probably ever done, and it's definitely in the top three of things Paul Reiser's ever done. Mm. It's probably right below the Paul Reiser show, which was, of course, a work of misunderstood genius. Uh, not, not really true. Um, but, but it's on freaking Spectrum, man. It's on man. Spectrum. I don't even know what that is. It, it supports Spectrum cable somehow, and fuck those guys. Yes, yeah, I have Spectrum for my internet. I don't want to... I don't want them to do this. I, I also have Spectrum, and it's because I have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I came across free Spectrum Wi-Fi, and it doesn't work at all. <laughs> that sounds about right. The Spectrum Wi-Fi is a nightmare. <laughs> I turn it off on my phone. Now, Randy, you have... Apple TV at home. Is I do. that correct? Yes. And they are about to launch their own little self-contained, here's all the TV you could ever need, perfected by Apple if you've already paid for an Apple device. Yes, but how, here's how I understood that. I thought the plan with Apple Plus, which is launching again, I think also in November, with this big expensive show featuring Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, and I, have you heard her pitch? Sorry to interject. No, but no. She's like, this is my first return to television since Friends. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I'm still television gold. You guys didn't know. I haven't, you know, let anybody touch my TV spot uh-huh. since then. I've been saving it for this. Yeah, well, she better <laughs> hope it works because it doesn't look great. <laughs> but the thought, I, I thought I understood that basically if you had an Apple TV, you would get free access to Apple+. Plus. Mm-hmm. That seems to be a trial thing. Like for thirty days, you get free access, and then you got to pay the seven ninety nine or whatever is a month to get the four shows that Apple's doing. None of which look great. Like yeah. it's yeah. hubris. It's just like Peacock. I don't know why you think you can launch a network off of this. What I don't understand is watching all of these places continue to reinvent this wheel. I've 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 been arguing the whole time that only CW has figured out this crazy new thing where they <laughs> show me shows on their app with yep. ads in them. Yeah. yeah. And it pays for itself, guys. It's called <laughs> advertising. And, and it just it seems to just work. I, yeah. I don't give a shit if they show me the same Discover ad five times in a row. I don't oh, care. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Work your algorithm yeah. out. But all of these other stations that need me to log into the cable thing or do whatever, yeah. or, or like, oh, well, we can't figure out how to get it to market. Guess we better make it our own separate streaming app. Just show me fucking yeah. commercials. Yeah. Well, you know what is uh, one of the real like uh, big downers on all this is that like Comscore and Nielsen's and the people who do like the ratings for television, yeah. they don't take any of the streaming into account. The ratings are bullshit and have been for a yeah. long time. So streaming is creating its new numbers that don't really take into account the science. They just take the clicks into account. You and, know? They, and they don't release them until they're good. It's yeah. it's genius. Netflix is like, yeah, everybody loved Honey of Hill House. Here's how many people watched it. Well, it oh. makes it makes paying the people who make the shows almost impossible too because yeah. they have no idea how big the show is sometimes. Right. Uh, I mean, at least at least some of the networks have started looking at, you know, uh, watching data past seven days or something like that. But yeah. I, I remember, well, almost everything I talk about on Good Die Young. Yeah. All seems to be from mid to late 2000s. Uh-huh. When we were all watching stuff next day or two days after. Yeah, and nobody was watching but that. But none of the networks yeah. considered that watching. Yeah. And so if you weren't watching it live, tough shit. And at that point, we all at least had DVRs or TiVos or uh-huh. something. And mm-hmm. no... It, like, there was a couple of years there where I swear no one was watching a live television show, and the networks <laughs> genuinely did not know. Well, and and what's or, funny, or just didn't give a shit. What's funny is now they've all caught up to, to plus three and plus seven, 
But that's the Pat's Pass site. Nobody's watching stuff like that yeah. anymore. People watch your everybody curates their own feed. We were talking with Grant before this. Uh Grant is just now catching up with stuff we watched six months ago. Mm-hmm. I watched somebody right after Game of Thrones ended that was like, oh my God, I'm watching The Tick on Amazon and it's fucking amazing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, brother, I don't want to break your heart on this, but you waited till Game of Thrones is over to watch that and it's gone. It's already. Yeah, it's over. Nobody uh, yeah. was watching The Tick, yeah. so it's already over. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, would have been the perfect companion piece to The Boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. It's, like, it's just. Wholesome and good and friendly. <laughs> oh, and the boys. And so the boys. <laughs> Such a not... cleanser of a superhero. Yeah, yeah, movie. you're right. It's perfect fun. And that's another thing that streaming has done is that nobody has a network identity anymore. The CW slightly does. The CW. How is it the CW, which is a fifth-rate network, has it figured out and yeah. nobody else does? Yeah. I, like, they've got, actually, a, they've got a brand. Like, mm-hmm. if you tell me that's a CW show... I will know this is like when yeah. you when you see a trailer, you're like, oh, that's a CW show. And whether it's either of their brands, whether it's mm-hmm. Capes or Riverdale, yeah. I, either way, like I can tell you that's a CW show. Yeah, but if you show me, say, Stumptown, I'm like, is that on CBS or NBC mm-hmm. or ABC? I don't remember what network this is on. Yeah, um, I was gonna say, I feel like what you're talking about with the CW app, USA does that too. Yeah, where they'll give you access to it, mm-hmm. which is kind of interesting because I could never watch USA as a as a kid unless my parents had some type of a cable package, right. even Obviously just like the basic. <laughs> um, so it's like, and that's where Weird Science was, the TV mm-hmm. show. That yeah, was shit. <laughs> um, funny story: a uh, girl who dated uh, my one of my college roommate was an extra on one of those. What? Yeah, one of the scenes where Gary and Wyatt had somehow magicked up where all the girls were falling in love with him. She was one of the girls staring wide eyed at him. Oh, it was crazy. nice. <laughs> um, but no, I think what is happening with all these uh, TV services is much like the uh, human like reproductive cycle. You have all I'm, these. I'm, you have my attention. Yeah, yeah. You have all these streams. Let's think Plan of them to as like your newsletter, sir. Little, little, little spermies, okay? <laughs> and they all want our five bucks, our ten bucks, okay? And they're all biting for a chance. But the thing is, I think only one or two of them is going to get through. And then even there, what I don't think they're all going to survive. just like children, you better think this sitcom is funny for the rest of your life because it's just that one <laughs> show. I was wondering what day. the metaphor was for the, for the sperm and semen and the egg. I guess yeah, I don't think they're all going to get there. Yeah, all these <laughs> different streaming services. You're like, you know, kid, I thought you were going to turn out to be Cheers, and instead you're Stumptown. The fuck? <laughs> I, I started uh, thinking of a metaphor that involved peeing into a bucket and then the bucket overflowing. <laughs> it's a little more <laughs> on for the Not streams. about this. No, it's just the metaphor oh, yeah, that yeah. runs in his head if he <laughs> clears the space like meditation style. It's a good metaphor to use for anything. It's like trying to piss the shit off the side of the toilet bowl just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you hit way too close to home. That's like yeah. a daily so, occurrence for me. To go, to go back, this is one of the other questions I have. There's been such a focus on original content. Uh, Netflix, of course, they saw they saw the writing. Give credit to the Netflix executives; they saw the writing on the wall years ago that the networks were not going to let them just take this from them, and they started making original content so that when the networks started pulling shit like this, yes. they had stuff to keep you on board Netflix. Yeah, because outside of the original content, the other thing that's happening is this uh, kind of fiefdom divvying up of of who owns what property, so that right. you're you're watching these power grabs for like NBC recollecting all of the. The NBC shows back onto it's their nostalgia app. farming. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It is yeah. nostalgia farming. It's like we. I mean, I'll be honest. Whatever network has Cheers, I'm You're probably going to want to have. Unless this is the thing. If they split to such a point where I'm spending seventy dollars a month on different networks, I'm just going to take that money. I'm going to buy the shows I want to watch. Yeah. I'll just buy Cheers on Blu-ray, and I, I will keep, go back from streaming. I keep running into that whenever like people's brains explode about, uh, oh my god, Friends might go off of uh, Netflix. I'm like, you Which, can, you can buy thing, the- go back and revisit Friends. How the fuck <laughs> are you still finding this show awesome? Yeah. It's really, really awkward now. But separate from that, buy the things you love. This yeah. was always a rental where you never owned it, and you yeah. knew that they could just stop having it there tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Or another possibility people could do is they could basically rent the streaming service uh-huh. for whatever show they want to watch on that streaming service, Right. then cancel it, go on to the next one. That's exactly what I do right mm-hmm. now. It's, it's a rotating move through all of the free uh, week trials and then see how fast I can watch a fucking thing. So I'm doing that too. And one of the things I wonder I'm about it now. is, I mean, Disney Plus is countering against this because they're not streaming. They're not binge streaming. They're, they're doing episode by episode. Yeah. And I wonder if we're going to see more of that. Because even Hulu ch- changes that up. Sometimes they're episode by episode. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's all at once. 
Prime is, I think everything Prime has released, I believe, has been as a binge. I don't think anything's been, but yeah. I can see where these new networks are going to be like, it doesn't benefit us to release this as a binge. It doesn't benefit us. We have a little bit of zeitgeist because everybody's watching at the same time, mm -hmm. but it's not worth it to lose the water cooler uh, of the week moment, and it's definitely not worth it to have people come in, watch the whole thing, and then cancel our service. I, I think yeah. something that we're going to see more often is going to be what just happened with the, the new Wu-Tang show on Hulu, which was releasing three episodes at once mm -hmm. so that you could get just far enough into a binge that you need to, to watch the rest, yeah. and then dole it out once a week. I think that's smart. I actually think most comedies uh, in general going back to the 70s should release their pilot and two more episodes because yeah. nobody makes good – very few people make good comedy pilots. And even if mm -hmm. it is, it's not going to be quite the same tone as the rest of your yeah. show. You need three episodes to judge what the actual show is going to look like. Sometimes you need a whole season like Sparks and Rec. Yeah. So in the new uh, streaming paradigm, do you make a calculated decision to say, okay, NBC, they have uh, Office, Parks and Rec, uh, Cheers – or actually, that might be CBS. Whoever has Cheers. Cheers on CBS and Hulu. Oh. Well, let's just say, okay, so the one streaming service, they offer four of your shows that you would own on DVD. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Is it cheaper to pay your six bucks a month to have them available right. than to put them into the physical shelf and be shelling out, you know, 20, 30 bucks a season? So that's something. That's the calculus. It is. But if you buy them, you have them forever. Yeah. So it depends on how long. Like, Cheers is a show that I've watched many, many times over many, many years and there's really no reason for me not to own the whole thing because six bucks a month across ten years, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's more than any Blu-ray set I'm ever going to buy. But and, there's there's less famous shows than Cheers, though, that, yeah. I, that I feel like are just kind of going to blip on and off the radar. Or like um, a single season of a show will, will pop up on uh, like Crackle or yeah. uh, 2B TV. And it's weird. It'll be like season two and three of a show. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and they're not... I mean, they're not stuff that people are going to, you know, nobody's breaking the doors down to go get Simon and Simon DVDs or something. But, right. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to watch some of it, like, if that's your show, you should probably just go invest in that. Uh, but, but yeah, you're right, Kyle. You, you'll have to you'll have to do the math on how many well, shows, yeah. how many shows, how expensive it is, some of these things. I, I, I feel like Half Price Books is going to be a lot of people's friends uh, <laughs> on their old DVD sets. But then also, you know, let's say, cool, I'll just get the streaming service that has four out of six shows that I really, really want. Yeah. But are they all going to stay there? If I pay the right. streaming service for a year, say a DC app, you know, yep. if, if, I, if I bite the bullet and drop a whole year at once, are they going to absolutely burn their entire company down with Swamp Thing before I get my year? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, well, and I wonder if we're not going to see some type of packaging happening. Just like with the cable networks. That's, where that's, where I, that's one of the things I A new company is going to come out. You know, let's just call them... Blumber whatever, yeah. and Blumber whatever is going to be like, oh, I'll give you CBS, NBC, like all of their apps. And it's a $5 but, discount. You get it all bundled through exactly, us. Exactly, yeah. yeah. With just this one pass. And the thing is, like, I, I got to think that at least one of the one of the big corporations is thinking about this right now. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we bundle Hulu and you all know that who, stuff? I mean, Disney's launching this way. Disney is bundling mm -hmm. Hulu, ESPN, and Disney Plus together so you get all three. Well, and I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be literally everybody except Disney who's like, all right, we have to put our powers together yeah. to take Disney down. <laughs> um, and then it's going to be like Disney versus all And then Disney them. just buys them. Yeah, yeah, Disney will just buy them. <laughs> so the Peacock thing also leads me to one of the big things. They're, one of the big things they're doing, they're going to launch in April. Uh, pricing hasn't been announced yet. But they're going to have basically all of uh, Parks and Rec, all of The Office, and at some point probably – Brooklyn and a Nine, The Good Place, all these Dirty Rock, Cheers, obviously. Thirty Rock. Like at mm -hmm. some point, all they're going to call all those home to the mothership, and they will lock up all this nostalgia TV. And the question is, they're going to have original shows too. And we'll get to that in a second. Can you run a network on the most nostalgic? T like, if you're a network, if your mm -hmm. streaming network is only the option of you can turn on your TV at any time and watch Friends, The Office, Parks and Rec. 30 Rock, that's there's an audience for that. The sitcom channel? Yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, if there's a game show network that's been on half my life, mm -hmm. there's definitely an audience for Feel Goods. Those channels already exist, the Laugh Channel right now. Yeah. Uh, every time I go up to Northeast Texas and, and spend a week with my dad, yeah. there is no lie a two and a half minute episode on right this second somewhere. <laughs> All, always, yeah. always, or Mike and Molly, or Grace Under Fire, or and and you can just flip your TV on, and there's just sitcoms. Right. If you're home, if you're homesick with uh, any kind of home healthcare medical thing, you can really lose sense of time. Yeah. Like 
whole days just blur together in this weird <laughs> Charlie Sheen joke. So you think people, well, but will people pay for it? Because that's different well, than cable. That's, well, I mean, would people pay to have a network that is basically just nostalgia? So I think and evening news, sure. There's a question we're not asking, which is yeah. how cheap is it? Yeah. to create something like this. because Have you ever heard of the term of a ghost well? Like when an oil well dries up, uh-huh. uh, you still get like a couple drops from it every now and then. Uh-huh. So people will buy them as ghost wells, and over the course of a year, it'll produce you know a couple barrels or a couple gallons, and you'll get a little bit of money, but just not nearly as much as an actual oil well. Uh-huh. So are these, like having all this IP to just like put out there, is that kind of like your ghost well? People watch it. They do. If they don't, it doesn't cost doesn't anything. Cost anything. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Like yeah. that's why I haven't understood why they haven't just set up CW style apps and just showed me this. Even if you yeah. only have one friggin' commercial, you can just show it to me a million times in yeah. a row. Whatever. If, like that you just said, seems it's just so fallow. wasteful. Like oh, that thing you yeah, talked about. So dumb. Like, can we talk about this for a second? I mean, everybody's had this happen where you see the same commercial on digital over and over yep. again. And what pisses me off is it just totally says, okay, if this is the thing that's paying for your television, like we're not doing our job. Uh, monetizing this properly, right. like we're just showing you one thing. We're obviously <laughs> we're, all we we're could doing make is more making more money you, for yeah. We're making you hate this product. It's just ah. it's just above watching Greeking text come up on the screen. Like the marketing department <laughs> yeah. forgot to put the real copy in, and it's just Latin. Like, yeah. This fall, Laura Mipsum, Laura Mipsum. <laughs> yeah. totally like, coming to a station near you. That's how I feel sometimes about it. So NBC also, as as is traditionally, you try to launch a new network, you put some new uh, content in there. So they're talking about. Um, their, their big thing, their, their big flagship seems to be a Battlestar Galactica reboot from Sam Esmail, who did Mr. Robot, which already has some people up in, arm, up in arms who are like, I don't want a reboot of my favorite reboot. Right. Um, I'm and, sort of half happy about that just because <laughs> of how bad the last season was. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally okay with them doing another Battlestar Galactica. I don't know that I need one, mm-hmm. but I would watch it if I didn't have to pay for a separate channel to watch it. It seems like, it seems like a weird thing, like if if they had if, say if you had Firefly or something like that, I know I'm aware of that is Fox, but mm-hmm. something like that where people are like hungry for more, yeah, that makes sense as your flagship. Yeah. Battlestar Galactica. Is anybody hungry for Battlestar Galactica? If they make it better, sure. If they make it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anything is anything is good, yeah. but like that's not a property where people are like. Oh, I was anxious to see a Battlestar Galactica. Do you know show. what Battlestar Galactica is perfect for? Hmm. This the guy out there who has like the most amazing sci-fi epic in his head that he's never going to be able to do anything with because it's not based on any original like IP. Mm-hmm. Retrofit that into something like Battlestar Galactica. You know, I'm not saying like pigeon arm it, but I mean, you know, there are people with like really good ideas that have nothing to do with something we've seen before. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you need like a little boost. I've from seen that. I mean, they, they did something. a um, Total Recall show for, that had nothing to do with Total yeah. Recall, but it was like an interesting pitch yeah. for me. Oh, or the Time Cop. Yeah. Or Time Cop, yeah. Uh-huh. If you're going to do Battlestar Galactica, the, the recent reboot of that. Uh, for whatever plot problems it, it had in its later seasons, it looked gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Do Babylon Five and yes. have it not look like ass? Man, if they it, did, a, it really didn't age well. If they visually, I but I love <laughs> Babylon Five. I do too. If they had announced Babylon Five as their reboot, yeah. uh, I'd be on board the Peacock Network. Here's the problem for the new Battlestar Galactica, though: the Expanse. Yeah, is mm. the new Battlestar That's, Galactica. Yeah, and it, we, it's we also the new have, Babylon Five. Yeah. yeah, we already have this in uh, the Expanse. And it's a better show. Yeah. yeah, by all, yeah, absolutely. You're not wrong. I mean, that's the thing. Doing a new sci, doing a big, expensive sci-fi show is, and it's risky, man. Especially when there's better shows out there on other networks. It takes Amazon money. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, and it already seems like the Expanse has that sewn up. There's, yeah. there's exactly enough audience for the Expanse. Well, they do have some other options. They do have some other things. They're going to reboot Saved by the Bell and Punky Brewster. What? Um, <laughs> and they have a talk show series from Jimmy Fallon. Uh, okay. So. I don't know what the fuck is going on over at NBC, exactly but someone script. needs to be fired for launching the Peacock because I this is going to be bad. The the thing that's keeping them afloat is that they have the nostalgia, to, and I and I don't know if that's viable or not. It's not for me. I I don't give a shit. I will not be buying this. Are network. we are we really calling this the Peacock Network? That's what they're calling it. Literally, the app is going to say Peacock on it. The name is Peacock. Mm-hmm. That not, oh. not Peacock Plus or Peacock TV. Peacock. I mean, <laughs> too many syllables. <laughs> is the are the executives going to preen around in the screen? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, you remember when the WB launched and they used Michigan J Frog as their? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. <laughs> as, they should have an, a like a an animated peacock who's like their. Oh, uh, yeah, NBC's their, definitely their, their got their animated mascot. peacock yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Got to be CG, like like the Poochie of yes. animated. Oh my god. Yeah. 
<laughs> Peacock had to go back to his home planet. <laughs> um, so, we, so what, what do you guys think? What's, what's going to happen here? Are, are we going to see a crash? We have to. I mean, that's the whole, honestly, yeah. that's the whole reason we picked the name Gilded Age yeah. for this episode is that this has to be approaching some kind of critical mass where this is going to pop. And is it going to be bundling? Is it going to be just a bunch of networks dying? I think um, it's going to be the lesser tier networks dying. Mm-hmm. And we're going to watch this bullshit consolidate back to like a 1950s or 60s three or four channel. Yeah. But it's three or four streaming networks instead. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, back to what we were saying before about how much it costs to have a streaming network, especially if your main business is already the, you know, the main television network. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if, because, you know, if you're putting everything into it, like Netflix, you could argue and say, well, they have everything into streaming, you know. Yeah, yeah they release a couple movies in theaters, but that's usually just to get around the whole Academy Awards thing. Yeah, their movies are getting better. Yeah, for the record. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, a company like that—if they just release a bunch of stinkers, like that company will go under. I feel like an NBC could do this, have the Peacock Act be a total f- uh, failure, and still not have to sell off their property. No, because NBC has yeah. been releasing stinkers for years. <laughs> well, and, I mean, honestly, yeah. At this point, we've got networks that are playing in this realm that could start something, watch it bomb in the red for a year, yeah. say fuck it, and walk away, and, mm-hmm. and not sweat it. I mean, yeah. like. It, Disney can just all of Disney Plus, all of Apple can like the Apple TV thing can yeah. utterly collapse and they'll just shake that off. That is the thing about the the Apple uh, TV service that yeah. they're doing is, you know, there's no if it's going to fail because this is all just like extra money they have. Like yeah, they make right. more yeah. money than like anybody. They don't need them. to be a, a network. Yeah. I, and Disney Plus, the odds of Disney Plus failing are so are low. There's zero. It is the it is the surest thing that we have in streaming. Is but I, I still feel like I'm watching uh, you know the Clampett set up a lemonade stand in the front of the mansion. Like, <laughs> I don't think this is what's paying the mortgage. <laughs> I, I still want a cup, but I don't think this is what's really. I don't think it's, yeah, it's not where it's clearly not where all your money. Some of that from. Mississippi mud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, so uh, prediction, guys. Who's the first to fall? Not you can't count the DC app because that's basically already dead. <laughs> who's the first, first streaming network to dead fall? In the water. I think Disney will close Hulu down. Really interesting, and just move everything over to and Disney move Plus. Everything, it, including its darker stuff. I don't know. Uh, that's that's my only concern. Like, I don't know what is well, left. Well, I guess Handmaid's Tale wouldn't shift over to Plus. Do they own ABC? Disney? No, no, I don't. Wait, yes, they, yes, do. they do. Disney I owns think, ABC. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. But they don't own Fox. Yes, they do. They own. They own everything. Well, no, they, they, they own the movie. They, they own, own the television. Fox. Television. Do they not own the TVs? No. Nope. Okay. So, no. so Brooklyn Nine Nine, all that stuff is going to go yeah. somewhere. All right. So maybe not full, but I bet Hulu transforms significantly into something, into something not something Disney that is a little more focused, and and we'll watch mm-hmm. some of these things shunt over. That's interesting. I, I'm wondering if maybe not close down, but if we watch these things stratify differently. Yeah. So that we get more shutter type. Uh, niche, genre, niche niche. Niche. I was getting ready to say, I don't know who's going to die, but I know who's going to live, and that's that cockroach shutter. It's going to be there on the <laughs> bottom shit. of the, of the airstream, you know, through the uh, nuclear they really, apocalypse. They have uneerily picked some great stuff. What I would love to see is somebody just hand, a, like, an amount of money that would be insane, but that Apple could just forget they lost <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to a group of crazies and put a streaming service up that is just straight up UHF. Yeah, the Weird Owl. Like, like, I want Wheel of Fish. Oh yeah, I want all of it, uh, and just just bug shit. Like, I should just find something on Hulu. I mean, on on my Roku at some point and go, what channels that? And it just be weirder upon weirder upon weirder. <laughs> do, all brand new shows. Do you think it's possible that like Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon could trick one of the networks to giving them? A few million dollars to run a network. It can have like an '80s Hitchhiker's Guide <laughs> yeah. production, but it can look like Red Dwarf. I'm fine yeah. with this. All of their shows can look like that. That's fine. But just, just balls out weird. Yeah, I'm amused by the notion of someone basically just like taking what is spare change for Apple or or Disney and being like, "Hey, you might have run this network," and they're like. Did we start a network three years ago? <laughs> like, is that still going down the hall? What the shit? Uh, I mean, who's yeah, that like, guy in the bathroom? Oh, that's the guy. That's the network. In, that's guy in charge of that network. There were like, what network? There were like two years on MTV where Andy Milanakis got a show. Yeah. and Squirt TV was a thing, and I watched all of Syphil and Ollie, which was just Liam Lynch and a sock puppet. <laughs> like, and I guarantee it's because all of the actual executives were in the same bathroom urinal doing coke and the <laughs> interns were like fuck it we can air anything get the sock puppets like, my buddy Liam has a show do it <laughs> uh, so well, stream that I'll pay for that <laughs> <laughs> well uh, we've seen the future and it's weird mm-hmm. um, and expensive and expensive fingers crossed uh, Dennis thank you for, for dropping on the mic with us this week no problem 
And uh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Les. Uh, thank you, Randy. Uh, you can find us over at uh, tvdudes.com slash, no, patreon.com slash tvdudes. Mm-hmm. We, have not, we have not swallowed pa- uh, Patreon uh, <laughs> Disney style just yet. No, not yep. yet. Uh, patreon.com slash tvdudes. Throw us a buck an episode. Uh, we're going to start doing Patreon uh, exclusive, exclusive episodes again soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got some some topic ideas yeah. going, so got expect to see those. plans for it. Expect to see those rolling out maybe yeah, a couple weeks. Yeah, if you want to hear what we think about the Marvel movies. <laughs> 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 no, we got some we got some fun ideas coming up. And uh, until next time, TV do it side. is an independently run podcast we are exclusively listener supported if you'd like to help us out go to patreon.com slash tv dudes you can like us on facebook and twitter at tv dudes all the music for our show is by our friend and original tv dude gregory j amani smith to find out more about us go to the tv i'm grant davis thanks for listening